Welcome to Open House New York 2020, Newtown Creek. This is a collaborative effort of the Greater Story Historical Society, Bob Singleton Narrator, and a Newtown Creek Alliance, Restore, Review, Revitalize, Photographs by Mitch Waxman, board member. Newtown Creek is a tidal estuary between Brooklyn and Queens. It extends for about three miles. The mouth of it is on the East River, and ahead of it is in Maspeth, English Kills. There are a number of locations in the Newtown Creek watershed that are still remembered. Others are forgotten. Hunter's Point, the community at the uh, uh, mouth of the creek. Well Basin, Dutch Kills, Penny Bridge, Furman's Island, English Kills, Maspeth, Bushwick, and the Bushwick Inlet are some of the names that are still with us to this day. We don't have much in terms of the original photography or original sketches or drawings of Newtown Creek, uh, but we do have a few uh, rather late watercolors that was done by an artist uh, who lived in Astoria about 1890. This is uh, the Queensboro Plaza, Queens Plaza. Uh, this would be Ravenswood, Dutch Kills, uh, north. And straight through the trees and valley, we see the skyline of New York City. And I understand that is the spires of St. Patrick's Cathedral. It gives you a very uh, good feel for what this area looked like uh, in its original natural state. Of course, this would be gone within 10 years uh, when the Queensboro Bridge was built, and it's pretty much uh, this exact location. The initial settlement uh, of, uh, was along Dutch Kills, which were retired people who worked for the Dutch Indies Company. They couldn't give them a retirement. Uh, in those days, people didn't have cash in the 1600s, but they had a lot of land. And so that's the, how it got the name Dutch Kills. Um, this is the head of the creek. Uh, this is English Kills because a settlement of uh, people from England uh, were, uh, came to this, this location. Uh, this is also a Native American village here in Maspeth. Uh, a little bit later, the Dutch settled a, a group of people from Holland in this location called, uh, the community was called Bushwick. And a demarcation between the two communities was a rock, arbitration rock. Arbitration rock still exists to this day. Now there were several border changes over time and several rocks were designated as arbitration rock. I believe this is the original one. It's really interesting because this is a, kind of a medieval way of uh, designating a property by, by rocks or boulders. Um, and uh, if you turn around and look in one direction, you can see the 21st century skyline of New York City. Uh, it's probably this rock is a glacial erratic. It was left here uh, by the last glacier when it retained, when it uh, um, retreated some 10,000 plus years ago. Uh, this was a, a line, this red line designates the salt grass, which was um, fought over by both the Dutch and the English uh, for their cattle, because in the winter, uh, the cattle was sustained uh, pretty much by harvesting this, uh, this grass in the summer and storing it uh, through the winter months. The industry of the area uh, were tide mills powered by the water from the various inlets. The earliest tide mill was the Berger Jorison Tide Mill uh, in Dutch Kills. It uh, dates from about the 1650s. Uh, this is not the tide mill itself. Uh, this is a tide mill further out in Long Island, um, but it's built on the same style as we believe uh, Berger Jorison's tide mill was. Uh, this, however, is the original house uh, that stayed inside the family. 
uh, and was passed down from generations. It was fairly torn down about 1910. This would be the head of Queens Plaza. Um, the back of it would be uh, part of what uh, is today the uh, Sunnyside Rail Yard. The mill, Tide Mill, was torn down in 1860 for the uh, Long Island Railroad right away through Sunnyside Yard. But the family that lived nearby uh, loved, loved the, uh, uh, the, the mill and everything about it and uh, elected to save the millstones from the mill. Now, these millstones are not from the 1600s, they're probably about 1800 or so. Uh, they displayed them by their house when their house was torn down. Uh, they saw that they were put in a sidewalk in front of some buildings in Queens Plaza. When the uh, Queens Plaza was reconfigured, uh, some years ago, the uh, millstones uh, were placed in an appropriate setting within the um, new park that was set up. A portion of the uh, this particular millstone was broken off and later reattached. Uh, again, these are not uh, actual pictures of Newtown Creek. Uh, they were done by a gentleman, William Sidney Mount, who lived uh, out in Long Island, some 20, 30 year, or some 20 or 30 miles from this location. Um, but he was very familiar with uh, the area. He uh, frequently uh, went to Manhattan where he went to art school. And he knew pretty much the uh, terrain of Long Island. And uh, this uh, would be a very good approximation of the mouth of Newtown Creek. Now this would be the East River, for example. And over here would be the headwaters of Newtown Creek, which would be in English Kills. This is a picture of uh, a family uh, harvesting the salt grass that uh, was very, very uh, useful for the cattle uh, throughout the long winter months. And this picture uh, is a nice representation of a, a young lad helping um, a person uh, do some ill spearing. Uh, these pictures date from 1855, but my feeling is that uh, Newtown Creek, again, would look very much like this. Uh, the hills along the side of it, the north side of it, where Calvary Cemetery is today, would uh, resemble this very, very closely. It's also interesting, too, to note that uh, Long Island was always multicultural, multi-ethnic, multiracial. It was something like 30% of the population were African-American or Native, uh, Native Americans. Um, oops. And um, slavery, of course, was very different in Long Island uh, as in the 1920s. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Sorry. Uh, I'm from social science department, and um, I was, you know, curious about this. But when we switched to online teaching in the springtime.